Good evening. It's good to see each one of you with us tonight. And uh, we welcome you to our home on this uh, March the, what's the day, the 8th? March the 8th, wow, it's hard to believe this. It's already March the 8th, but uh, we're, we're excited about what the Lord's doing and we wanna remind you to join with us this Sunday at 10 o'clock at Infusion Church. Join with us, let's worship the Lord together. Do not forget, turn your clocks ahead one hour before you go to bed Saturday night uh, or you will be late to church. Uh, you'll be getting there about when we're leaving. So you don't wanna do that. So come and join with us at 10 o'clock and let's uh, worship the Lord together. We're, we're uh, got several things going on that we're excited about. I'm glad you're with us. Uh, Denisa is unable to be with us tonight. She hasn't been feeling well today. And uh, so just remember her in your prayers. Uh, she's fine. She's just uh, not feeling well. See, you only have to put up with me two times a week. She has to live with me all the time. And so that's, that's uh, you know, can be overbearing at times. So uh, uh, thank you. Uh, and thank you for your prayers. A um, couple of things coming up. A week from Saturday, not this coming Saturday, but a week from Saturday, the 18th, our unashamed women's group will be meeting at the church at 930. You don't want to miss that. And then coming up uh, on April the 2nd, we're having uh, lunch after church. We're doing an Easter egg hunt for the kids and we've got something for the adults. You don't want to miss it. Join with us. Spend some time with us on Sunday, April the 2nd. And then the very next Sunday is Easter Sunday morning, April the 9th. You don't want to miss it. To me, this is the most exciting time in the Christian world because this is what it's all about as we celebrate Jesus. Uh, so come and join with us and let's worship the Lord together. Uh, get involved with what's going on. Um, also, um, you don't want to miss Sunday. I'm beginning a series this Sunday that carries us up to Easter um, uh, about the last day, not the last days, which we're probably living in, but the last day talking about the life of Jesus. So you join with us uh, beginning this Sunday uh, for this series that will carry us up through Palm Sunday and then uh, the next Sunday is Easter. Um, I want to talk to you tonight and I, wa I want to ask you a question. Um, you know, we, we talked about this time of Lent, this time of preparation, refocusing, re uh, re and it's also a time when I, I think about um, how important prayer is. Um, how often should we pray? What does the Bible tell us? How often should, how should we pray? Um, you know, do we just pray, Lord, bless me and my wife, our son, his wife, us four, no more. Uh, do we pray, Lord, bless us and bind us and tie our hands behind us and throw us in the bushes so the devil can't find us? Um, you know, and what is prayer? Uh, is prayer just just words that we we throw out there, or is prayer the crying out of our heart uh, and life? You know, before we answer the question of how often we should pray, I think we need to look at what Jesus said uh, when he's talking about uh, life, and he says, "Here's how you should pray," and this is found in Matthew chapter six, verses nine through 13. And the new King James version says, uh, in this manner, therefore pray, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. A couple of weeks ago in my Sunday morning sermon, I shared um, the thought of uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And I, I shared what the message had to say, how it rendered that verse. Now, the message is a paraphrase, and I understand that. Uh, but but I think it's interesting, the wording that is put here in the message. So I'm going to reread this, and this is the way that the message puts it. With a God loving, with a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best as above, so below. Isn't that what thy will be done on earth? Is what's best? You know what's best. Set as above, so below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. And then he says, keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're a blazing beauty. Yes, yes, yes. In prayer, there's a connection between what God does and what you do. You can't get forgiveness from God, for instance, without also forgiving others. If you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's part. And that's the way the message puts those verses. But I really like verse 13 in the message where it says, keep us safe from ourselves and from the devil. And I've thought a lot about that over the last few weeks. And I've thought, you know, you know, we blame the devil with everything. And I, I'm convinced that the devil gets blamed with stuff he didn't even do. Now, he does enough. And I'm not saying he doesn't. And I'm not saying he's not behind stuff. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that sometimes he just gets blamed for stuff. My washing machine quit. The devil's after me. Well, you don't tell people that you've had your washing machine for 25 years and washed 12 loads a day for 25 years. The thing wore out. It's not that the devil's after you. It's a mechanical thing and it needs to be replaced. But he says, keep us from ourselves. And I'm convinced so much of what we go through sometimes and some of the situations we get in ourselves in are because of us. It's not necessarily the devil led us here, but we went where we wasn't supposed to go. We did something we wasn't supposed to do. We said something we wasn't supposed to say. We allowed something that we wasn't supposed to allow. So Lord, keep me from myself. Protect me from others. Um, yeah, protect me from the devil as well, but but don't let me have self-inflicted wounds and self-inflicted problems in my life. So Jesus says, look, this is a manner in which you should pray. And it's not that we just recite that simple prayer every time we pray, but it is a pattern for how we should pray of, of thanking God, of 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 blessing him for who he is, for his provision, of giving thanks, of asking for, for help in our daily lives, for helping us to be forgiven and to forgive others. Lord, keep us on that right track. So my initial question was, how many times should we pray? How often should we pray? Some people, when they first get up, they take some time and they pray every day. That's when they pray. Other people at night pray. Um, it's a very routine thing that they pray in the evening and, and there's nothing wrong with either one of those. But when you look at what the Bible says and when you look at what God's trying to, trying to get us to see, 
Prayer has to be a daily discipline for you and I. It has to be something that we do on a daily consistent basis. Um, to pray regularly requires discipline. And we are to be disciples of Jesus. Um, unfortunately, most people have this on again, off again prayer life. When things are going rough, they pray. When things are coasting along, they don't pray a lot. Um, it's, it, my concern is if we're only praying when we're under the gun, is that sometimes too late for God to intervene in our lives and to help us? And when I say too late, understand what I'm saying, that maybe we go through some things that we wouldn't necessarily have had to go through. I shared Sunday, I believe it was Sunday, about uh, about our praying for our kids before they were ever even born. And we prayed for their spouses, even though we didn't know who they were gonna be, but we prayed for them before, but because I didn't want to wait till they were 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Of course, I told Kristen she wasn't going to date till she was 30. Uh, and then I'd have to, it would only be on a double date basis. But anyway, that didn't work out that way. Of course, she also told me that she was always going to stay with me. And that didn't last either. But that's natural and that's the way life should go. But that's the way every parent feels. And that, but I didn't want to wait till they got to that point, and then go. Oh, wait a minute. We need, we need to pray. You know, I don't. I don't really think this person that they're they're dating is the person I want them to be around. Or or is this the right one? You know, we've been praying for them all their lives before they were ever even born, and for whoever God was going to bring in their life. Now, it wasn't the first person they dated. It wasn't. Uh, there were other people that they they all dated before they found the one that God, I believe, intended for their lives. But I think that prayer goes a long way. And and I've seen people who pray for their children, and 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 they've prayed for their children all of their lives. And when they when they pass away, <coughs> their children still don't know the Lord. But I believe those prayers are still resounding in heaven because I've seen so many people come to know the Lord after, and, and they link it back to the prayers that their parents had prayed, their mothers had prayed for them uh, while they were still alive. The Bible talks about our prayers being in heaven and in vows and, and, and it's not something that God just cast out, but, but I believe they're stored up and I believe... There's, there's a secret in, in praying and being prepared. Now, I am first to tell you that life will throw you some things you're not prepared for. We all know that. We all have experienced that. Uh, we didn't see this coming. But the secret is God did. God saw it was coming, even though he didn't show us and we didn't know it was coming. He knew it was coming and he prepares us and gives us grace. But I, I want you to notice what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter six, verse 18. Paul writing to the Ephesians, he says, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. He begins that 18th verse by saying, praying always, praying always. If you take that word that's translated always, it's a Greek phrase. It's not just one word. It's in pantikeros. In, in, best translated, at. Then that panty means each and every. And Cairo means times or seasons. So that panty, you could say that 
this word is all encompassing that embraces everything, includes the smallest and the most minute of details. Uh, it is it is important that when you think about that that all three of those put together in Panti Cairo, and Cairo means times or seasons at each and every occasion. You could translate this verse in this manner with that understanding of what that one word, and we get the word always. And this this is what I tell people about translation from Greek to English. There are some times that, that there's not a clear word that conveys every thought that is in the original text. And there's sometimes that one Greek word takes more than one word to, to get its meaning. Uh, but he said, here, here's a way to translate that verse. Praying anytime there is an opportunity, no matter where you are or what you're doing, use every occasion, every season, every possible moment to pray. That's what he means by pray always. Pray always. At every opportunity, on every occasion, no matter where you are. And, and look, I know that there are times on the job, okay, you, you can't just fall down on your knees and start praying <coughs> necessarily. And that's, that's not what he's talking about. But every opportunity that I have to pray, I should take it. And there are times when I'm even praying, I'm not praying out loud. There are times that even while I'm preaching, I'm praying, God, you got to help me through this. This is not getting through. I just, you know, it's, there are times that you're in a crowd, but it's not verbal prayer, but it's prayer that's coming out of us. There are times when I don't know what to put into words. And, and you know, those of you that know us and been with us for, for years know what we've been through and where we've been. And, and, and Collins, a couple of years, gave me a great understanding of prayer. God knows exactly what you need, even before you ask. And Collins' prayer that he taught me was Jesus. Amen. Because you see, Jesus is what I need. I need him. And this prayer that, that Jesus told us to, here's how you pray. Simply pray like this. He says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, you know what's best. As, as you're doing it, do, do it here. Do it in me. Do it in my life. That's simply what Jesus, amen, means. Is Lord, it's yours. I need you. I give it all to you. You see, prayer is not an option. And it's not optional for Christians. It's to be a top priority of our lives. Prayer is our lifeline. It's a communication with our Father. How can we know what our Father wants us to do if we're not in communication with him? The word, hey, that's his communication with us. And we're reading the word and we're praying. And some of the most powerful prayers you can pray is when you pray the word. How often should we pray? Paul says, always, at every occasion, at every opportunity, don't just pray when things get bad and then forget about it when everything's going good. Pray even during the good times of thanking God. God, I, because let me tell you something. If there's one thing I've learned over these last 66 years, it's this. Where you are at this moment will not last. Life's gonna change. Something's gonna come. 
Something's going to be different. If you're in the middle of the valley, you're not going to live there forever. You're coming out. If you're on a mountaintop, can I tell you, you're not going to live there forever. You're going to go through the valley. We've got to learn to live a life of prayer. This whole idea of Lent, of, of crying out to God, of refocusing and refueling and, and re God, help me to, help me to, help me not to look at prayer as the last resort. <coughs> help me to realize that prayer should be the first thing out of me. I start this day with prayer. I end this day with prayer. I pray through the day. Now, does that mean I'm always praying? No, I can't say that. But as I, I think it was Sue, yeah. Sue said at Walmart, you better be praying. On the road, you better be praying. Hey, some crazy drivers. Some of them are from Georgia. So you just have to, you have to be careful and you have, you, listen, prayer is, and it's not about the words and knowing the right jargon or the right religious lingo. Prayer is a communication with God. I'll never forget a man when I was growing up, big man, he was, actually a hobo during the 30s and my dad witnessed to him and shared Jesus with him when others told him he wasn't worth the effort and he came to know Jesus Christ. And I remember my dad calling on him to pray in church. And I've, I've been raised in church. I've been in church my whole life. I had a drug problem. I was drugged to church. And I remember when he started to pray, first time I ever heard the man pray, it wasn't like any prayer I've ever heard. You know, we all have the, oh, Father, and hey, our Father, that's fine. I'm not knocking it. But he's, he talked to God like God was his best friend standing there next to him. He didn't have all the religious lingo. He just poured out of his heart. That's right, Sue, a conversation with your best friend. That's, wow, that's good. That is good. A conversation with your best friend. That's what it should be. Because he should be our... He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I want to encourage you tonight. During this season of, as we're coming up to Easter of renew, what about refreshing your prayer life? What about hitting a reset button? And instead of just going through the motions and our son and his wife and us four and no more and, what if we just pour our heart out to God? What if we genuinely thank him for what he's done in our lives, for the salvation that he's given to us, for the people he's brought into our lives? I thank God for my wife. I, I know I cut up a lot, but I thank God for that woman. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God brought her into my life. There's no doubt. I thank God for my three kids, our three kids, for our three in-laws, for our five grandsons, for my parents and her parents who instilled the truths and not just instilled the truths, but they lived the life in front of us. I thank God, and I shared this Sunday. Sunday was 28 years. March the 5th, 
1995 was my first Sunday as pastor of Infusion Church. And this past Sunday was March 5th, 2023. I thank God for the people that God brought into our lives. I thank God that he caused our paths to cross. And I believe he's brought us together for such a time as this. Nothing that's happened has caught him by surprise. He knew it was coming. And as I ended the service Sunday, I remind us tonight. He that has begun this good work in you is more than able to bring it to completion. He's more than able. God help us to realize who we're serving. Help us to talk to him. One part of communication, I, I, I heard something. I heard something the other day about, you know, we all, we all go to, to, to college and, you know, I learned, they, they taught me homiletics and how to preach and how to do sermons. And, and yeah, I had to develop my own thing and style and, and everybody does. But but you learn things and and you but you mean to tell you a class that I never had that I should have had how to listen because you see most of communication is not just talking it's listening most problems in marriages can be boiled down to one or both, don't listen. We're so busy trying to think of what we're gonna say when they stop that we don't hear. And that's why the Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear. Listening is so important. See, part of prayer is not just giving God my list. Part of prayer is listening to God and letting him speak into my life giving him that time when I'm just thinking about him. I'm thinking about his word. I'm allowing him to pour into my life. That's so important. God help us to do what he's calling us to do, to cry out to him, pray always every opportunity, every occasion. Don't miss an opportunity to pray. And it's not that it's got to be 14 minutes long or, well, if you didn't pray for an hour, then you're not real spiritual. You know, some of the shortest prayers in the Bible brought about the most results. The prayer that Elijah prayed on Mount Carmel, they call fire down from heaven. In English is only 63 words. And yet fire fell from heaven and consumed the sacrifice and licked up all the water that had been poured over it with a simple prayer. God help us. God help us to cry out to the Lord and look to him. Father, I thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. I thank you for this opportunity to come together. I thank you for your word to teach us, to instruct us. Thank you for your word about prayer that here's how we ought to pray. And your word that says always, on every occasion, on every opportunity, not just when things are bad, at every occasion. God, have your way in each of our hearts. Draw us to you. Help us to pour out our hearts to you. Lord, sometimes I think we're afraid to pray what we're really feeling because we're afraid we'll offend you. But Lord, you know what we're thinking. We're not gonna offend you. So many times I've cried out, God, I don't understand this. God, I don't want this. 
Lord, you know what we are in need of before we even ask. Have your way in each and every one of us. May we become obedient disciples of Jesus to pray and believe that you are more than able to do what we would ask or think. You're able to do above and beyond what we would ask or think. God, have your way in each and every one of us. I cry out for our service on Sunday. I pray for an outpouring of the Spirit of God. I pray that as we gather together, Lord, may you move and minister by the power of your Holy Spirit. Open your word to us. Lord, those that are hurting, bring healing. Touch lives today. We thank you for what you're going to do. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Amen. Thank you for joining with us tonight. Remember our service Sunday. Be there 10 o'clock. Don't forget, move your clocks ahead one hour before you go to bed Saturday night. Daylight Savings Time begins this weekend. Uh, so remember to do that on this, this uh, Saturday night before you go to bed. Uh, thank you for joining with us. Continue to support the church. Continue to give. You can go to infusionchurchnc.com. You can go to our giving page. You can give through Easy Tithe. You can text give, or you can mail it to Infusion Church, P.O. Box 14281, Archdale, North Carolina, 27263. Or you can bring it with you Sunday as a glad offering to the Lord. Join with us. Let's bless the Lord. Thank you guys for being with us tonight. Thank you for being a part of our lives. And as we shared Sunday, I share again tonight. Thank you for being our family. Thank you for standing, for praying for us, with us. We're all in this together. And we thank you for being a part of what God's wanting to do at Infusion Church. Lord bless you. We will see you Sunday. Be blessed. Enjoy this week. Live life. Take today. Live it. Be what God's calling you to be today. Lord bless you. We will see you. God's blessings upon you.